Hey everyone, today I'll be explaining how to use the animated rebuild feature in Axiom. This feature was released in Axiom 2.8 and should be super useful for content creators trying to make satisfying time lapses and things. I want to do more Axiom tutorial videos just like this one, so if you want to see more, you can subscribe and I'll keep posting these semi-regularly. Alright, let's jump into it. Okay, so here I have this red sphere here and we're just going to animate this to begin with. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to open the editor UI and we're going to go up to operations and animated rebuild. This is the window that will show up and uh, I'm just going to put this over here. And this is essentially how we're going to do it. But you might notice do animated rebuild, which is the button you're going to click to perform the, the action is grayed out. So what you're first going to need to do is make a selection. I'm just going to make a box selection and then we can uh, yeah, change it like this. Okay, just get that stone out of there. And now if we hit enter, you'll see it's now no longer grayed out and we can hit animated rebuild. Okay, so as you can see, it starts from the center and builds outwards, which is pretty cool. But uh, we've got some other things to look over. First is these presets, so you can make horizontal sheets, which is kind of like those Lightmatica printer time lapses that you see a lot of content creators do. But with animated rebuild, it's a little more uh, not as satisfying, it's kind of just like this. Don't worry, we're going to get into how to fix that soon. The other preset is very random, which, well, I mean, <laughs> you can guess what it does, it makes uh, the animation very random. Okay, an important thing to note here though is that the animation is not based on the blocks that are inside your selection, it is based on the shape of your selection itself. So here's an example, I have a box selection and the center is right here. Now what happens if I just move the center over here? The red uh, sphere is still in the selection, but it's, the animation is actually going to start right here. So, oh, I forgot to select that, but what this kind of looks like is it should start from here and then start going down like this. Yep, that is exactly what happens. If you don't like that, well, I've got a pretty easy fix for you. Basically, all we need to do is go up here to get magic select and then just, you know, select our area. This will be a little more complicated with some more, you know, complicated builds, but for our sphere example, yeah, you can see it starts from the center. Another really cool feature of this tool is that you can select the starting point by literally just placing a structure block. Let's say I want it to start here at the bottom, then you can see that the animation starting point is going to be at the bottom there. Yep, and it deletes the structure block and then it starts from the bottom going upwards like that. Okay, now to show you how all the parameters work, let's move to a more complicated build. Okay, here's a house I made with Axiom a little while ago, and I'm going to show you how to make it look like those printer time lapses. So first we're going to make our selection, I'm just going to select it with a box, and then yeah, make sure you hit enter once so that the button shows up, and we're just going to hit horizontal sheets. Now if we do this just as is, you're going to see we're going to run into the same problem where it starts from the center and just kind of, you know, plops it into existence like that. So first things first, I'm going to select my box, right? I'm gonna select that stone base, and I'm actually gonna make this just one bigger for a reason. And that reason is so that when we place our structure block down at the bottom to uh, emphasize a starting point, it'll actually, you know, get it in the selection. Okay, so hit horizontal sheets again, and you're gonna add just a little nudge of the horizontal multiplier right here. And what you'll notice is that it's going to start building out again, kind of like those printer time lapses that you may have seen. Also, pro tip for all you builders out there, make sure when you're doing a tutorial, you actually, um, you know, choose a build that has an interior. There's no holes in it. What the heck's going on there? <laughs> Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to slide this random extra delay up quite a bit. I mean, you know, you can choose how much you want it, but I'm going to slide it up quite a bit, all the way to about one. And once we do this animated rebuild, you, you can see that it starts to randomize it a little more. So you get less of that diamond shape and more of a circular shape going out. Okay, I think it's time I show you what all the parameters mean, because that's really how you get good at using this feature. Now the first parameter we have here is start delay, and well, that's pretty self-explanatory. Max delay is a little more confusing. It's essentially just the maximum amount of delay that any of the other parameters below can add. So if you set this all the way to zero, there's going to be no delay. But if you set this to like 1.5, then the maximum amount of delay any of these parameters can be is 1.5. It's kind of like a, a global delay. Next we have all four of the block delays, and these are really what modify the speed of your animated rebuild. 
And so air block delay, as you can see in my box selection, there's a lot of air blocks, right? How I like to think about air block delay is, as you can see in my selection, at the top of it, there's going to be a lot of delay because there's just a lot of air. But once we get further down into like this part where there's not as much air, in like, if you think about it like layers, then this part is going to be much faster. And a little editor's note, uh, the air block delay doesn't matter as much in this structure because, well, there isn't air on the structure. But if I animate a tree, for example, you can see it matters more because air is part of the design. And just keep in mind, if you don't want to worry about this at all, just crank it to zero, and then it just won't even account for it. Now, same block delay and different block delay are pretty self-explanatory in essence, but are important. Let's move over to the red sphere again, and you can see there's a lot of red blocks, not a lot of green blocks. So if we crank this same block delay way down and we increase the different block delay a bunch, what you'll notice is that the lime blocks are going to take longer to put, be put in than the red blocks. Okay, that was a horrible example. This is a much better example of the function. We can see different blocks are moving on faster than the blackstone, which is the same block. Now, random extra delay is important. This is what's going to kind of add that satisfying randomness, as the name implies, to your animation. The best way to show this parameter is just to show you without it, so you can see you build out from these like diamond shapes, which is pretty cool and satisfying. And now with the random extra delay, you can see that it's a lot more noisy and random as it builds out. So the last two to show you are the horizontal and vertical multipliers. Now you can kind of think about this like you're squashing a sphere or you're expanding a sphere or stretching it. As you can see with this build, the animation looked more like a sphere because both the multipliers are at one. So the horizontal multiplier, that's going to act as your squish when you move it down. It's going to squish the sphere, and now it's going to look a little more like rows are being filled out. Then if we move down the vertical multiplier, you can see it sort of stretches the sphere and is going to build with more column-like patterns. All right, so as you can see, Animated Rebuild has quite a few implications uh, when you're making time lapses and such, so uh, I hope you found this useful, and uh, maybe I'll see you in another video. All right, uh, catch you later. Bye-bye.